Thinking about switching to an insulin pump? Not so fast. I've been on and off various pumps for nearly 30 years and there have been a few things you need to know before you make the jump. In this video, I'll talk about whether an insulin pump really makes managing diabetes easier, the real life pros and cons of using one and what to look for when choosing your next pump. Quick heads up, this video is brought to you by Omnipod, the makers of Omnipod 5, which is the insulin pump I've been using for about a year. They paid me to make this, but they didn't hand me a script. So buckle up insulin, it's about to get real. And thanks for making this video possible, by the way. So does an insulin pump and specifically an automated insulin delivery system really make managing diabetes easier? I have to admit that I might be a bit biased here because I've been pumping for such a long time. I allow myself a pump break here and there, but most of the time I am on a pump. Now, over the past few years, I noticed that whenever I'm on a pump break doing multiple daily injections, I typically spend between 80 to 85% of the time in my optimal range, between 70 and 180. When I am on automated insulin delivery system, my time in range is usually above 90%, so about 10% better compared to multiple daily injections. From my experience, I can also get a better HbA1c when I am on the AID, especially during times when I'm a little bit out of my routine and not micromanaging my diabetes. But why is that? Why is my control on the pump so much better? You see, the pod is not the only piece of diabetes equipment that I'm using. I'm also wearing a CGM, continuous glucose monitor, it's right here. The CGM checks my blood sugar every five minutes and sends the information about my glucose to the pod. The pump then takes the information and uses an algorithm to decide how much insulin it should give me, creating a hybrid closed loop. When I'm on a pump, I don't need to give myself a daily shot of long-lasting insulin. Instead, the system gives me a microdose of basal insulin every five minutes, depending on the real-time needs of my body. The goal of the system is to help keep me in range using my target glucose, which is set to 110 milligrams per deciliter, or about six millimoles. The best thing about the algorithm is that it gives me more insulin whenever it sees that my blood sugar is rising, and it suspends insulin delivery whenever it sees I'm going low. The algorithm is doing all that 24 seven in the background, taking a lot of work out of my plate, which is a huge help, especially during times when I'm busy. I don't have the mental energy or time to deal with my blood sugar management. But to be honest, the time when I find the automated insulin delivery system the most helpful is during nights. You see, when I'm on multiple daily injections, I often wake up in the middle of the night because my CGM alarm goes off. And whenever that happens, I usually have to get up and eat something because my blood sugar is low or get a correction shot because my blood sugar is high. And sometimes the CGM alarm doesn't wake me up, but my morning blood sugar is all over the place. And these days are really tough. I typically feel tired, I'm grumpy. These things can ruin the entire day. But with an AID like the Omnipod 5, I get less alerts from my CGM and I sleep better and I wake up with an okay blood sugar almost every day. It's a game changer. So if I was choosing a new pump today, one of the most important criteria for me would be the option to integrate with the continuous glucose monitor and the automated insulin delivery option for sure. But here's the thing, being on a pump has its challenges too. So let's have a look at some real life pros and cons of a pump. And the most obvious challenge is that you need to be connected to this and wear the pump on your body pretty much 24 seven. You can hide it under your clothes, but sooner or later people around you will notice and they will ask questions questions, which can get annoying, especially if you like to keep your diabetes private. Obviously, it is easier to hide a patch pump like the Omnipod 5 compared to a conventional pump with the tubing. Now, when you're on a pump, you don't need to inject yourself with a needle multiple times a day, which is a big plus. Because when I'm at a dinner, for example, it's a lot easier for me to dose insulin discreetly from my phone rather than taking an insulin pen and doing a shot at the table. For me, it just makes more sense to wear a pump and deal with a pump side change every three days rather than doing five plus injections every day. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what makes more sense for you. If you don't like needles, a pump seems to be a clear option. And I think you would love the Omnipod 5 if that's your case, because when you're putting it on, it won't let you see the needle at all. Everything is hidden inside the pump. Moving on to the next real life advantage of a pump. At least for me, whenever I'm on a pump, I had a lot more flexibility with food. When I'm in a restaurant, for example, I can give myself a couple units as a pre-bolus before they bring me the meal. Another couple units when I see how big the meal is and another couple units if I decide to eat more or order a dessert later on. I do all that dosing discreetly from my phone. Without a pump, I feel I'm less flexible to divide a dose like this into such small increments because every time I like to take additional insulin, I need to stab myself 
with the needle and that's kind of annoying. But on the other hand, I noticed that when I'm on a pump, I tend to eat more food in general because it's just so easy to dose more insulin. For me, this is not a problem, but it's something to consider when you're switching to a pump. Now here's another challenge that I experience with pretty much all the pumps I use. You see from time to time I see my blood sugar levels starting to creep up for no obvious reason. Whenever I see this the usual suspect is the insulin site failure. Now if I were you I would not let this discourage you from using a pump. In my experience site failures are pretty rare but whenever they do happen having a spare pot on you takes care of it quickly. I always carry one in my backpack just in case. But let's move to another real life situation that might worry you showering and swimming. And here we really need to distinguish between the tubed pump and a tubeless pump like the Omnipod that I use. The vast majority of people on a tube will simply disconnect from the pump before going to the water and reconnect when they're done. And that's great because you don't need to worry about the pump getting wet when you're taking a shower or swimming in a lake. But you have to realize that whenever you are disconnected from the pump you're not getting any background insulin. If you're disconnected multiple times during an afternoon at the beach your blood sugar can end up pretty high, especially if you eat ice cream on top. <laughs> now the advantage of a patch pump is that it stays connected to your body all the time. You can shower with it, you can swim with it, and while you do that the algorithm keeps working in the background, giving you the right amount of insulin, trying to keep you in the optimal range, which is pretty awesome. Next real life situation I want to talk about is exercise. I've been doing quite a bit of strength training lately and from my experience I need to stay hooked up to a pump during this activity because otherwise my blood sugar would start creeping up. But the thing is I don't I love to have the insulin pump in my pocket or clipped to my belt when I work out. And that's another reason why I really like the Omnipod, which sits directly on my body. Now another two kinds of exercise I love are basketball and roller skating. I've been getting back to doing more of these lately, but I have to honestly say that it's been a challenge. Whenever I have too much insulin on board going into these activities, my blood sugar just plummets. The obvious challenge that I have with all insulin pumps is that the rapid acting insulin in the pump is the only insulin I have to work with. And that's why I find it key to be proactive and use certain advanced pump features like the activity feature or temporary manual overrides to reduce the amount of insulin I have on board prior and during these activities. Which brings me to a super important point I want to make. When you're switching to a pump, I think you should have a deep conversation with your healthcare provider. Not only about strategies for exercise, but about the overall pump settings. The thing is, no matter what pump you choose and no matter how good the algorithm is, it will only serve you as good as your settings are. The one specific advantage of the Omnipod 5's smart adjust algorithm over some other systems is that it learns your body's insulin needs and it gets better over time. But but it's important to get the initial settings right and be patient. Let the system do its job and don't try to fight with the algorithm. Now if you made it all the way here you are probably serious about getting a pump but maybe you're not sure which one to choose. So let me give you a few pointers, a few things I would look for if I was choosing a new pump today. Number one, I would only look at pumps that can integrate with CGM and that have automated insulin delivery system, aka hybrid closed loop. This is the most important thing for me by far. A pump without automation makes no sense to me because in my opinion, the main benefit is in the automated insulin delivery. Number two, I would look at what CGM options the pump can support. And this is especially important if you have a strong preference of certain CGM brand. The Omnipod 5 for example supports integration with Dexcom G6, Dexcom G7 and Freestyle Libre 2 Plus. Number three I would really think about what type of pump best suits my lifestyle. Do I want a tube pump that I can connect to and disconnect from whenever I want and I don't mind carrying something relatively big or heavy in my pocket or do I prefer a discrete patch pump that I can easily hide under my clothes and that I can keep on whenever I go swimming or play a ball. What I like specifically about Omnipod is that it's tiny and it's easy to hide, which makes any outfit look better. What do you think? <laughs> While being really small it does have a 200 unit reservoir which for me is plenty because I hardly ever need more than 40 to 50 units per day. A number four thing I would do if I was deciding for a new pump I would think about what kind of person I am when it comes to my diabetes management. 
Do I want to be very involved and change my settings often? Or do I want the system to do most of the work for me? You see, some systems on the market require very little involvement, but still deliver good control. Others might give you even tighter control, but they do require more hands-on management. From my personal experience with multiple AIDs, Omnipod 5 strikes a good balance between these two. It delivers solid results without overcomplicating things, kind of giving you the best of both worlds. By the way, if you are interested in Omnipod 5, I would definitely recommend that you check your eligibility for the 30-day free trial and see if you like it. To do that, go to omnipod.com slash type one talks or just click the link in the video description. By the way, by using my link, filling out the short form and trying out Omnipod 5, you will support my channel and you will show the company that I sent you. But at the end of the day, no matter what pump you choose, the important thing is that you find what works best for your lifestyle. And I hope that this video helped get you there. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ciao.